Auto Line on the Road from Motorbella 2021 is brought to you by Tajin Automotive Technologies, the formula for better mobility. You know, I've often said I wish I had a dollar for every time I heard somebody claiming they had a battery breakthrough. Well, guess what? I think we've got a battery breakthrough here for electric cars. Let me introduce you to Dan Cook. He is the CEO and co-founder of a Silicon Valley advanced materials company called Lighten. And you guys have figured out a way of using graphene in batteries. Tell me what some of the advantages are here. Sure, John, and uh, thanks for joining us today in our booth uh, here at Motorbella. We're really excited to be here. And uh, our innovation is really three-dimensional graphene, and uh, it's a very uh, innovative, revolutionary material that we've developed onshore. We own the intellectual property. And Three-dimensional graphene has some phenomenal characteristics. When you actually marry it with, sul with uh, sulfur, you can actually create a battery that has the equivalent of three times the energy density of so, today's conventional lithium-ion. So these, these three green ones, these, these are uh, the batteries coming out of China today. Conventional lithium-ion. Conventional, right. and you've got lithium sulfur here which is equivalent to three of these batteries. That's right, on, an on a gravimetric energy density basis, that is correct. And and it's light, lighter than any of these batteries. Absolutely, you can feel it for yourself. Uh, it, it's lighter than three of them. Yes, indeed. So, this has got to be tremendous because you're saying you can make this with all the materials right here in the U.S. and do all the process. There's no cobalt in these. There's no manganese in these. Yeah, no nickel. And uh, you're right. We uh, we can make this all domestically using domestically produced materials. And uh, we're the only known, uh, we think, the only known U.S. Uh, MCA compliant battery uh, to help our uh, both uh, onshore as well as offshore uh, OEMs make the transition to uh, from ICE to BEBs. So cost, how, where are you on cost? Everybody wants We're to know below, that. We're uh, below ICE parity, uh, and we will go even below that uh, in the years to come as we scale our operations. So they say ICE parity is like $80 per kilowatt hour. You're, yeah, you're, you're, we will be there and well below that. When uh, can you go into production with these batteries? Um, our start of production plans put us at uh, 2025, 2026 with some of the companies we've been speaking with. And uh, we're actually going to make plans earlier than that to break ground on, a, on our first 30 gigawatt uh, uh, factor. So everybody says solid state batteries are the next step. Where do you stack up against them? Well, solid state uh, has its own place to play. And uh, we think we're, we're an additional play to solid state. Uh, if you listen to the Department of Energy, they've actually forecast in their narrative that lithium sulfur won't show up until 2030. Because of what we've done with our innovative material, we think we can pull that in to be at least at or maybe even before uh, uh, solid state terms of getting to market. Battery fires are in the news these days in a big way. How do you stack up in terms of thermal runaway? Well, uh, we've done some preliminary internal tests uh, with some outside third parties where we've actually tested thermal runaway and we can actually apply twice the, the, the rated voltage to our cell, charge it, overcharge it for four hours and it's only gone up 10 degrees. So uh, part of the reason why we're so confident about our battery is that, that, that as you pointed out, it has no nickel, no manganese, and uh, uh, no cobalt, nor the, the oxides that go with that, which really create the fuel, if you will, for some of these uh, incendiary events. So sulfur and, and graphene are relatively inert substances. And uh, uh, in fact, when uh, we actually puncture our cells with, with nails, we've detected uh, temperature rises up just a little bit north of body temperature. So you can still hold the cell uh, comfortably, uh, uh, but uh, uh, that's what we've done. Let's go to the opposite end of the spectrum. One of my concerns about electric cars is how they perform in cold weather. I mean, I'm in Michigan, it can get pretty cold here. You can lose half the range of your EV. How do you do in cold weather? Well, the unique part about our architecture actually is that because the graphene and the sulfur are so interdispersed, we can actually go down as low. Our tests show us down as minus 30 without heating and uh, still have a functional battery. And so. Uh, uh, we think we can fit uh, the Michigan and other cold weather climates. Okay, one last question then. Cycles. You know, I, I've seen plenty of interesting info about uh, advanced batteries that do great in the lab, but how do yours do from a cycle standpoint? Well, uh, truth be told is we had a, a really tough customer, a uh, first customer in the U.S. military, and uh, they challenged us uh, with exactly that, is lithium sulfur has with it 
this cloud of uncyclability. And so we've actually proven uh, with, with the military, uh, with military customers, over a thousand cycles of some of our earlier prototypes. And so uh, we think we can solve that problem and, uh, and have already begun uh, to do so. Well, I can promise you, Dan, I'm going to keep a sharp eye on Lighten because what you're talking about here is phenomenal. And right. thanks for your time today. You bet, John. Thank, Thank you. you. With global reach across three continents, Tejin Automotive Technologies make vehicles lighter, safer, and more eco-friendly. Tejin Automotive Technologies, the formula for better mobility.